Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and the Warbots just got trilogized as we see the release of Fans Project's Warbot Assaulter. About as big as the broadside of a barn, Assaulter's had a long journey of development since we saw his concept art back at TFCon 2009. Stuffed into his box alongside him is a continuation of the Warbot comic book, notably showcasing that this dude, capital M, capital S, mass shifts. Also as a bonus, he comes with a sprue of vehicle-moded warbots in scale with that mass shifting. Steel Core and Defender are present, as well as possible analogs to Roadbuster and Sandstorm. Not to mention two bikes that resemble the warboticized Junkions we saw alongside Assaulter's concept art back in 09. Starting off with his robot mode, Assaulter needs a bit of tweaking, since he needed to compress a bit to fit into his packaging. With that out of the way, dude is a robotic beefcake! He towers over the other warbots and has a weaponized weight of die-cast metal in his legs. This is a great use of the material as it keeps him weighed down and quite difficult to knock over. He's got a lot of the chunky shapes made of hard angles aesthetic spotlit in Fans Project toys like Defender and Protector, with a color scheme that's paying homage to the oft-forgotten Autobot Triple Changer Broadside. He also looks like he's been bench-pressing monster trucks for fun. I love this take on his design, with my only major grievance being the bittiness of his back. To its credit, there are still clearly defined body shapes, such as shoulder blades and a backbone. I just wish there was some way to fill in the gaps between those parts. One thing that can help is the weapon storage on his rear end. You can mount his pair of accessories there to at least fill out his midriff silhouette a little more, but that's not the important part. The important part is that much like Defender, Assaulter can reach back and draw his own firearms. This bit of design wowed me back when Defender came out, and I am ecstatic to see its return. The specific assembly of angles and joint ranges can't have been a coincidence, either. In hand, Assaulter's guns are pretty huge, looking like they're meant to be held with two hands. Technically, they can be. You can also swap the mounting point and flip out an energy blade to transform his firearms into melee weapons, which look pretty cool and are held in a very sci-fi awkward manner. Also, the blade piece is legit sharp, so be careful. So this dude's big and chunky and made of chunks and big and chunky and chunked, but is he poseable? Yeah, um, his head's kind of ball jointed, it's tiltable, so it is thus immutable, so it is thus doing what I want it to do. His arms look like they could be super cluttered, but they aren't. Uh, you just kind of have to accept that these shoulder pieces um, are a little bit up to interpretation. You can move his shoulders out like this, which makes his arms look a bit longer, you can move them up like this, which kind of maintains the aesthetic, but makes things awkward. I think it's cool that both joints are there, granted mostly for transformation, but you have the aesthetic choice to make of how obtuse and angular and elengthenized you want his arms to be. Uh, his elbows are not double jointed. Uh, I find this forgivable, uh, mostly due to uh, some transformation stuff they do. Uh, the bicep swivel is a bicep swivel. His wrists are on ball joints, and as you saw earlier, that affords them just enough tilts to do that really cool thing of pulling stuff out from behind his back, which I appreciate. And his waist is a little bit risky. Uh, it is jointed. You can turn it. It's lovely and solid and whatnot. However, these little gray things, you gotta kind of be aware of where everything is, because if his leg is bent and kind of in the way, those gray things can start to... Uh, where are they hooking on this? Oh, well, they can start hooking on stuff. Here we go. And, uh, like right here, they're hooking up on the red bit, and this plastic is super solid, but when this super solid plastic grinds against itself, one side has to lose. And I think that the red side will lose this battle because it's a little bit pointier, so be careful. Um, what you're hearing right now are big, lovely ratchet joints in his hips. These are super tight. And not to any detriment. Uh, they are pretty tight when you get this guy out of the box, but as with many of his tightnesses, the more you use them, the more they kind of break in. And unlike Defender, it doesn't feel like they're going to break in and then break. So I don't think that these things are going to wear out anytime soon. They feel like they're much more smartly designed. Um, the thigh swivel also has a really lovely clickety-click kind of deal. His knees are technically double-jointed, and... They bend pretty easily. The thing is, it's hard to bend the part that uh, looks like it's meant to be the knee, which is that black joint, because it's very easy to bend the inner transformation joint when you're messing with this guy's knees, and it's not a big deal. Uh, the only bummer is if you do it uh, the wrong way when you try to stand him up again, you might find he gets a little bit lopsided. So just, if you if you find things aren't quite working out right, just yank his, his legs out again. 
Uh, there is supposed to be a divot in front in this robot mode. This robot mode. Um, so that that's one thing you can look at to kind of give you a clue as to whether or not things are going correctly. Finally, his ankles, four such weird looking feet. Um, they have a pretty decent range of motion and are able to sit quite solidly thanks to being so wide and bipod-like. So since he has two of those and huge wax of die cast in his shins, when you put him down, he generally stays there. Uh, he might pivot a little bit on his ankles here and there, but even when he's leaning forward, the dude doesn't really fall down all that much. So, uh, Assaulter feels and poses kind of like how he looks. He's flexible, but nothing really moves in, in huge directions, and no matter what you do, it's hard for him to fall down. Even when you give him a shove, like, look at this. This dude could take a pound in. Anyway, I'm talking about other robot modes. I wonder what that could be about. Let's go take a look. Baked into Assaulter's bipedal form is another bipedal form, referred to as the secret mode. This is a simple aesthetic shift into a robot mode that homages G1 Broadside's other character model from the original cartoon. It also simplifies the palette, gives him arm spikes, and reveals that he is angry. The overall effect is pretty good, if a little underwhelming for those not as into the idea of an internally integrated animation model swap. The face has some great punchy paint apps, but it also looks oddly small, even after taking into account Assaulter's muscular silhouette. I think that implying Broadside's white robot head to be some sort of helmet messes with his proportions a bit, kind of makes him look like a bean noggin. Either that or the tall red forehead's just messing with me. Starting from his regular robot mode, Assaulter mass shifts into his battleship mode primarily by transforming his arms a lot. A lot of panel angles in his forearms align with those around his chest with specificity that, relievingly, doesn't cause any major fragility. The key connection points unfurl from the outer casings of Assaulter's forearms. These tabs will likely be hard to plug in, but resist the temptation to shave them down. Just apply careful and controlled pressure to get them in there, and do it a few times. It gets a bit easier with each insertion as the tab and slot sort of mush together and form fit through friction. I'm guessing the paint on the thighs is being compressed on a microscopic level. Unfolding a few panels and aligning the bridge section finishes Assaulter's transformation, with the cherry being the addition of his guns of the nose of the craft. It's a bit of a maraschino cherry, though. It's great that his weapons integrate and store so well, but I can't deny that they're also necessary for the vehicle mode in a way that feels a tad parts formery. This isn't your average Earth battleship. This is a sci-fi anime space battleship that probably goes for coffee with the SDF-1 and the Yamato every Saturday. The Macrossisms feel strong here, especially in its top-down silhouette. There's surface detail all over the top deck and side bulkheads, as well as a really cool bridge section that's assembled from a lot of conflicting shapes that manage to gel together in a surprising way. You'll notice I'm not saying the word bottom very much. That's because this mode just decided you're not supposed to look down there. Structurally, the main weakness is that the cylindrical chest section from the robot mode prevents this mode from laying flat on the table. Aesthetically, the big downer is that Assaulter's head is just staring back at you when viewed from the underside. I really wish something had been implemented to hide his cranium, although I will admit that when I'm not looking at the bottom of the battleship, I sometimes forget the head's there. This mode is big, large in your hands, and made to play with the included sprue of micro warbot vehicle modes. It's also not making a single excuse for its spaceship motif, which has demonstrably not worked for every collector. I like it. Others don't, and have figured out some interesting fan modes to pull off a more earthly waterborne shape. Several parts of Assaulter feel made for these unofficial formations, and I am not sure just how unintentional that is. Restarting from robot mode for practicality's sake, Assaulter's other mode has a transformation that feels insane the first time, and dead simple the second time. His shoulders take things a bit farther, clipping together with a connection that requires the same breaking in as the tabs for battleship mode. His face is thankfully hidden in a very clever way. The jet nose cone uses a cool angled cut to straighten out before a deceptively simple trick is done to reshape Assaulter's upper body and close up the bulk of the jet mode. You'll want to click his hips outwards one click, and everything should be able to slide and lock together, except to wrestle with it a bit. His guns return to elongate the wings, while tail fins unfurl and tabs are connected. This transformation becomes very fun once you've seen how it works in hand. And, guys, this jet mode is sublime. It is huge, it is wide, but it's also flat and looks so very meant to be. It locks together so solidly, and while it's only aerodynamic in science fiction, its lines make me think aerial war machine. There's even landing gear. 
I do think it's weird that two-thirds of the landing gear have got working wheels, while the more clever parts reuse for the front wheel is just implied and unrollable. It lacks thruster sculpting, and the middle of the chassis gets a little bloated, but I don't care! This jet mode looks confident, and it's so damn fun to just swoosh around, land on my desk, and pet like a killer metal avian. Approved. Assaulter is the largest of the Warbots, but definitely lives between the design deliveries of Defender and Steel Core. He has Defender's looks, and his transformations begin to feel just as complex, but his engineering leans far more towards Steel Core's while keeping its feet planted on Defender's carpet. He plays to a lot of my tastes, between the hard angles, chunky parts, badass jet mode, and macrossical battleship mode. I have a ton of fun transforming him, almost more so than posing the robot mode. His joints are a bit tight, but anything detrimental has sort of smoothed out over time, without feeling like that smoothing is going to go critical like on Defender's poor knees. If you are into at least two of his modes and dig the fan's project aesthetic, I'd recommend Assaulter. Even if one of his modes don't work for you, there's enough play in his body to figure out a fan mode that can likely fill that void for you. His use of diecast is justifiable in both function and artistry, keeping his robot mode grounded and adding a heft that goes in tandem with his size. He's not the enormous stride forward that Steel Core felt like, but Assaulter definitely expands on the triple changer engineering kicked off by Defender. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and I hope this has helped you come to a decision about the third Warbot squad member. It's a cool progression of design to look at in person. Hopefully there is more Warbot action to come, with all new Onomatopoeia in its pack-in comic books. Chuh-fang.